we've held our will so long as a personal process and leave out the deeper significance of our will, which is to give it to the world. Some years ago, one of my mentors asked the question, are you and I a part of the same reality? And if so, how do we know? How do we verify a shared reality? The idea led to the inquiry around what is it that allows us to cross the boundary of the self where I know what I know, have what I have, and enter into a space where two or more could experience a shared phenomena in consciousness. We've reached an age in which much of what we are now becoming aware of cannot be resolved by one expert's understanding of the reality that we're in. And it doesn't require a group of experts to enter into the field of consciousness from which mutual creation can occur. I was thinking while I was here the last couple of days and today, what happens to the stuff that was said? What happened to all the words that were given in this conference, last year's conference, the last thousand years of conferences? <laughs> so my talk today is I give you my word. What is that that I give other than speech? But I have to look while I'm doing this speaking, look at the activity that you're doing. What happens in attentiveness with reality as it is, as it is becoming? What is it that you are doing that makes what I am doing meaningful? We've inherited this exercise from the ancient cultures of the world, particularly Greece, for the Western mind. The exercise was someone who could transmit the intelligence of the gods to a group of neophytes, students, pupils, initiates, and bring into the intellect the intelligence of the cosmos, the workings of the mysteries, and develop academia, a formulation now known as the lesser mysteries, or we call in our culture the liberal arts and sciences. We downloaded wisdom, put it into categories of intellectual endeavors, and then practice with it to build our civilizations. But what if we could go back to the source of all the paradigms from which we now create our reality? What if we could suspend for a moment that we are just listening to another talk and enter into the field of cognition that allows all of us to access from the level of attentiveness that we are giving the primal intuition that gives us the 
power to open the veil between the lesser realities and the greater ones, for which everything that is to come is already prepared, and we could witness it together. What if this is not another conference, but an invitation to utilize the collective consciousness, not only of our time, but of all times, in the great storehouse of soul and spirit that is our inheritance. We must, in our time of this civilization, the culmination of the Western epoch in which the mind was separated from its source. Cognition. And begin again the science of becoming a self-conscious, which was the instruction, know thyself. When we went into the mystery temples, it was to hear the word that is making me become myself. Whose words make you more yourself? Whose authorship? gives you permission to agree with the use of your own humanity? Which doctrines of belief brings you closest to the divine that is residing in the deepest recesses of your own consciousness? Which science awakens your will to the highest level of originality of thought? What an age to have all those choices <laughs> of all those traditions of wisdom, all those intellectual pursuits, the greatest libraries. The word can be also translated, I give you my will. And so whose will are we using? I come from an heritage in which my ancestors' will was forced to be used for something that they could not benefit from. And in the exercise of giving their will over in slavery, another consciousness of will came into consciousness. They created another will in this experience. Once talk about suffering. What happens in suffering? When there is no will for yourself because the suffering takes it away. Whose will then becomes available? Whose word comforts the soul? Whose compassion reaches the sufferer at a time in which their suffering is not self-imposed, but designed by a societal mandate? How come this embodied principle could not be understood that some other level of creation was transferred to the suffering people. Where did it go? Where did that will go? What I'm bringing into our discourse for consideration 
is that the paradigms from which we live could lead us to find the source of those paradigms and the source of a level of agreement that allows us to share ultimately a kind of freedom from wanting more. And if at this moment we could decide that what we have been given as the word in every context of our collective humanity and the willpowers of creation, what kind of choosing will happen among us given what we know is happening in our world? And am I committed enough, I ask myself, to give you my word at a level in which I don't need any other evidence to secure your trust and your agreement that what I have is yours. Will that complete our age if all of us will say to each other, what we have is yours? What happens to the world if just that one choice is made? The challenge is, if we keep pursuing, I want more of anything, this tremendous arcana of wisdom that is our collective humanity remains untouched because I cannot get it by myself. It is not for one. It is for all. And if I am to be part of the all, I have to be willing to share myself with the other. It's been discovered that we could enter different states of consciousness with each other and move through the doubt and the fears and all the inner assumptions and agree on something. And in my practice, I was asked one time some years ago to work with a young man who had uh, used drugs, and he had left his mental boundaries and was diagnosed with schizophrenia as a result of this episode. And his mother asked, would you take some time to meet with him? And so I did. And the interest was, can we help bring him into normalcy again? Well, I spent 20 hours a day for two weeks with him in direct observation. Observing, where are you? The you that we know we all are at some level, how do we find it? Attentiveness. So in my exercise with him, just looking for the moment when mutuality and contact can be made. And it took two weeks before he recognized me. Ah, you're there in this delusion. I was real. We started a dialogue. But in my journey there, and there was not any distance of time and space was between two human beings, whatever we have to cover. And in entering into this truthfulness, I discovered how much I have to change in order to be with another human being who was so far in another reality of knowing. 
And then what he was experiencing, I became aware of in my perception, not in my cognition. I don't know those things to be real, but my perception told me it was true what he was suffering from. I bore the suffering. I carried it with him. And I asked him, would you come back? And all the words that we had to practice together was, I am here. Where is here? The neuroscientists would say in the brain consciousness of cognition. The anthropologist might say, well, you're in your community of practice. But here would be, I am with you in the reality that allows you to know you're not alone. And so the journey started. We would thus say, I am here for hundreds of times, like any good practicing mantra tradition. It took two, two months to arrive here in the year and time that was generally accepted as reality. But we noticed while he was, while he was in, 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 in the hospital with some help from his physicians, the psychiatrist would come in and because he had already had the diagnosis of schizophrenia, when the psychiatrist was speaking to him, he was schizophrenic. Then he would turn to me and we'll have a normal conversation. <laughs> In the same room, two different realities hosted by two different people. And one day the psychiatrist was asking, are you hearing voices? And he said, yes. <laughs> the psychiatrist asked, what are the voices saying to you? And he said, it's saying, are you hearing voices? <laughs> and he looked at me and we started to laugh. <laughs> Realized that, wow, he had recovered enough of the perspective of the separate realities that some people host. So the condition of our world is such we could choose, really, to alter the states of consciousness, not only for the other, but for ourselves. Because as hosts, we have more power to say, let me come to where your suffering is, and let's get out of it together. Let us give, let give each other the permission to exercise the trust that it takes to leave this dark, wounded place of the soul and enter into the creativity that gives our humanity its dignity again so that we wouldn't be locked away. So the delusions could be the cause of drug addiction or it could be the delusion for power of any kind that puts a person so far beyond mutual engagement of trust. We must be careful where our sciences lead us, where our religions lead us, where anything that gives you your unique potential, if it moves us beyond where others suffer, we owe it to ourselves to ask, can I give you my word that I will be there with you to return to a reality that can be shared, that can be loved, that can be mutually understood, and from which creation of our world can begin again. We've inherited our becoming. Let us use it wisely, and let us become ourselves with and for each other, that we may stand in this time and know that there's a greater threshold to cross. And doing it together gives us the evidence that we need, that once we are in the agreement, 
futures could be decided. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.